Welcome back, everyone. I'm ESL teacher Lisa. Welcome to English Speaking Corner. Today we're going to talk about something very important, and that is English proficiency. How well is your country doing with their English proficiency? Well, to get the most accurate and up-to-date information on English proficiency rankings for 2024, not just for your country, but for around the world, I recommend checking the EF or English First English Proficiency Index or EPI. And this is an annual index that ranks countries based on their English skills. So you can find the latest rankings and analysis on the EF EPI website, or I've actually downloaded that report for you for free, and you can get it in my Gumroad store completely for free. So you can follow along during this video. So we're going to look at that report. It gives us a ton of information. Well, why is this important? Well, you should know how your country is doing with its English proficiency. Or if you're thinking of moving abroad, applying for a job, it's good to know ahead of time how that country is doing. Because you might say, OK, I'm at an intermediate level. I think I speak English pretty well. I'm going to move to this country here. And then you get there and you didn't check or really research their English proficiency. And you thought, oh, wow, I could really use my English in this country. And you realize that the citizens are reluctant to speak English to you or you didn't realize how much they struggle with the English language. So it's really important to know. And so we're going to look at that detailed report because it can help you when you're applying for a job, moving, communicating with international clients. What is the expectations? Well, first of all, let's look at who they tested. So who are these people? Who did they test? Let's look at the demographics. So this company called English First or EF, they have taken 2.1 million total test takers. So we have 2.1 million people. So that's a lot of people. They're from 116 countries and regions. 54% of these test takers are female. 46% are male. 17% were born before 1990, and the average or the median age is 26 years. So that's who we tested. And then we're going to look at the entire world, all of the countries. We're going to look at all the continents, and we're going to see how well they are doing with English. So let's look at a detailed uh, copy of this report, and I'm going to point out a few interesting highlights. And what I love about this report is it actually shows the connection that English has with business, with growth, with opportunities, with certain sectors or industries like engineers or IT. It actually correlates all of these things with English. It's quite fascinating. So Let's jump on the computer. Let's look at a copy of that report. If you want to follow along, you can download it for free. The link's in the description. All right, let's go. OK, so I have the report open. These are the rankings for 2024 of countries with the highest proficiency, very high to low. So you can already see, looking at the color-coded map, the areas that have very high proficiency versus the low. Again, if you want to see this close up, you can download the PDF for free. But let's look at some of the rankings. I'll make this a little bit bigger. What are the top 10 countries with the best proficiency in the world? Very high proficiency. So number one, we have the Netherlands. Two, Norway. Three, Singapore. Four, Sweden. Five, Croatia. Six, Portugal. Seven, Denmark. Eight, Greece. Nine, Austria. Ten, Germany. So those are the top 10 countries with the first nine having a very high proficiency. So if you're in one of those countries, congratulations, you should be able to find people to practice your English with. Next, let's go to high proficiency. So still great, still very good. Most of the citizens do very well here. And I won't read all of them. You can download the report, but we have uh, Finland at number 14, for example, here. Uh, we have Estonia at number 20. The Philippines, 22, that's where I am currently recording from. I've been here for two years, and I just use English to get around. And so 22, most Filipinos are pretty uh, proficient in English. We have Malaysia, 26, Nigeria, 30. 
And then we have the countries with moderately high proficiency. So they're moderates, which means they do okay also. Hong Kong in particular is at 32. We scroll down. Uh, we have Italy at 46. I'm going to scroll us over. And then we have South Korea coming in at 50. So remember, this is out of 116 countries. So South Korea is 50, so somewhere in the middle. So again, not bad. And then we have other countries like El Salvador, 55. So you can go through this list and find your country. And then I just want to take a look at the low proficiency. Some of these countries might surprise you, uh, maybe not. So 62, we have Iran. Turkey's at 65. India, 69. Again, this is low proficiency. And I'm going to scroll over a little bit more. I looked intentionally for China and Japan. China, 91. Japan, 92. And I know Japan in particular has slipped in the rankings. They used to be a little bit higher, but now they're at 92. And then we'll look at some of the very low proficiency countries. Haiti's at 99. Saudi Arabia, 105. Thailand 106. So if you're thinking to move to some of these countries, you just have to know, for example, Thailand, I know a lot of expats go there, like from the US have um, immigrated there to Thailand to live. And what many of them don't realize is compared to the Philippines, Thailand has a very low proficiency of English. People don't speak English there. So you're going to struggle to communicate in many cases. Whereas if you go to the Philippines, you won't struggle with English because most people speak English there. But that's just a quick comparison to see how you can use this chart. Okay, so I talked about some interesting highlights, some interesting facts. So I'm going to scroll down here, down through the report. And it gives us global trends, um, which is really nice. Like, what can we do with this information? So I'm just going to zoom out uh, so I can find where I'd like to go to. This is what I showed earlier. English and the economy, English and innovation, English and human development, English and global innovation. So it shows how English has impacted some of these areas. I want to take a look at English and the economy. I just want to get a little bit closer so you can see this. I'll read it to you. It's quite fascinating. That English proficiency remains a reasonable indicator of a nation's ability to produce goods and services that generate economic growth. And it correlates well to national investment in helping people achieve their full potential by providing education, health care, and a decent standard of living. Adults with strong English skills are a marker of a more flexible and outward-looking workforce, especially when they are spread across all the sectors of the economy. So simply put, a country that has a high level of English proficiency has a direct relationship with how well that country does producing goods and services and providing education and opportunities for their citizens. This is what this graph shows us, English and productivity, English and the economy. So that's quite interesting. And I want to go to those individual sectors. Many of you watching are in IT, for example, and there was something interesting here with English and work, English and what profession you're in. So English, I'll read it because I know it's kind of small. I'll try to zoom in a little bit here. I'm looking at this graph here on the left, English and work. English is key to international collaboration in every industry and every industry is subject to the forces of globalization. So that's everybody is affected by English in some way. But there are differences in levels of English proficiency between the industries. And that's just a result of current or historic hiring, training practices, a demand for English skills. But what you'll notice on the graph here, what you will notice is quite interesting. That people who are in professional services, that's the top one here, aviation, media, sports and entertainment, food and beverage, IT, information technology, engineering, medical devices, you see these are the, really the industries that need and have high proficiency. So if you are an engineer or an IT and you're looking for a job, you better improve your English language skills. Less so in some of the other industries that are listed down below. 
like insurance, banking and finance, retail, manufacturing, less English proficiency is found there and therefore less is needed. It, uh, that's quite interesting that it makes this comparison. You could look at the results in more detail. So go through this report. I'll end the video here, but go through it. It, go, it, it takes you through job function, um, English and society. It goes on and on. It's, it, it's incredible. English and gender equality, English and freedom, um, further detail maps, age trends, and then it breaks it down by continent. We can specifically look at Europe if that's where you're interested in. We can look at Asia if that's what you're interested in and Latin America. So I highly recommend downloading this. Take a look when you have a few minutes and really see if it can help you with your English language life. Again, looking to move. If you have customers where you speak English, just looking to improve as a hobby. This can really help shape your English language speaking skills and maybe help you with some of your planning. So again, you can download the report for free and I will see you in the next video. Any questions or comments or anything, especially those that have those data analysis skills, let us know what you found and what you find interesting. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Take care, everybody.